Are the uh, FME TADs different than the custom MARPI TADs or the MSE TADs? So they are different because they have their own proprietary TAD. Uh, and, and the most unique thing about them is the locking mechanism of the TAD and how that secures to the anchor body. So when you look right here, you can see that the TAD goes all the way down into the anchor body. And you can see these threads here, these are for the retaining screws, but there are similar threads on the head of this TAD that actually lock it into place so that you know when this TAD is fully seated, there's only one way that it can be. And so the idea or the theory behind this is, is trying to overcome some of the limitations that we had with things like MSEs, and still to a certain extent with custom MARPIs, but not as much as with MSEs. Whenever you have wiggle room in the system, uh, then there's going to be basically less expansion actually happening than at the jack screw itself. And so the idea is if we can create a more rigid system that doesn't allow the tads to bend or tip as much, then we can get more predictable and more accurate expansion. Is there a better visual of, because I think when people hear about the so-called locking tads of FME, they don't totally understand what that means, even though it's really not that complicated of a concept. Sure. Can we get a better visual on that maybe? Yeah, so this is this is the, we'll blow this up as much as we need to here. These are the, these are the locking tads. So you can see here, there's threads that go into the bone. And then you can see here, there's threads that are wider that lock into the anchor body. So these ones here, are what's locking it in. You also might notice if you're an engineer type that the threads look different. These look like they're closer than these. And so you're thinking like, well, how does that work if the threads are turning you know, at one speed and then it's locking into the body, but the threads are different, but these are actually dual threaded. So for every two, one, two of these threads, there's one of these threads. So when you're locking it in, it, it goes in at the same velocity. Oh, it's a perfect two to one it, ratio. It's a perfect two to one ratio. So that as you turn, the velocity of the tad pulling itself into the bone with these threads is the same as the velocity of the top of the tad being anchored or secured into the anchor body itself. Mm -hmm. Should we take a look at some of these appliances themselves? Sure. Yeah. So these, these are the current versions of the FME6 and the FME8 here. And so the differences that you'll see is that on the FME8, you'll see that there's two additional tads on this anchor body itself. The middle part is very, very similar, although you'll see that these arms are longer than those arms. And again, this is something that's customized. So when they send you the case, they're going to send you the arms that fit for the amount of expansion that, you're, that you are requesting. So this top part here, these are the anchor bodies. So we'll just take a second and actually undo these so you guys can see it. Can't do this on a patient, but it makes it a lot easier on the type dump. <laughs> There's a lot of other forethought, just an example of, of the innovation. So. When you're, when you're placing the initial anchor bodies, these same exact screws that I'm unscrewing now are actually fixated into the anchor body itself and they're holding it in the exact position that it needs to be held. And I'll show you that once we get this out. Okay, so then this part is that part that is interchangeable, right? So this is the part that can actually just be removed. And again, if you have more expansion that's needed, then it can be, um, you can get a different one. So that's the actual screw portion. These are the anchor bodies here, okay? So when, oh, wow. yeah, when, you are, when you are placing these acre bodies, when you're actually putting those tads in, there is the guide that goes over top of this and that guide is screwed into these holes with these same exact screws. So basically the guide's there and these screws are holding it on. So the guide is screwed onto the pallet before the pilot holes are drilled? Correct. Yeah, just like in orthodontic surgery. Yes, they'll, they'll sometimes screw the guide into the bone before they place the plate. So same idea. So the guide is screwed on and these, so these can't go anywhere, right? So then you're, you're going through the guide and I think I have a video that shows this pretty well. You're going through the guide to place these tads. So the, you won't actually see it like this when you're delivering um, the, the expander itself. I'll show you here, we'll actually start to remove uh, one of these tads and you'll be able to see how those come out. And again, you would never do this. You would always have the guide in when you're messing with these or putting them in and out on a patient. How do you feel about the tooling that comes with the FME? Do you like it? Is it, is it well done? It, it's very precise. It's very precise and everything's been the highest quality so far. Uh, you know, and, and, they sit, and, and innovations have, have happened even between the version of this type of knot and the ones that I've placed in the mouth. So right now you oh, have- there's, a, there's a, the locking tad little threads there. Yeah. Okay. So with the current version, just to simplify the installation process, there used to be two different drivers, one driver for the retaining screws and one driver for the tads themselves. So 
So now with the current version, it's the same driver for both, which makes it a lot easier so you're not having to swap that out mid-procedure. Right. So you know, as you're placing it, it's going to go down again into it's already been piloted. So you know that the, the orientation is, is as ideal as possible. It's going to thread through until you hit that anchor body. And then once you hit that anchor body, those threads are going to engage. And now it's going to continue to thread through until it's all the way down. And then this locks, you cannot overturn it. You can't go all the way through it. No torque wrench needed. Well, there is a torque wrench needed because if you, you know, if you put, you know, hundred Newton centimeters or your 200 Newton centimeters of force on it, you, you could strip something, right? Something's got to give. But if we crank this down to where it's supposed to be, which is 35 Newton centimeters. That torque wrench comes from Facegenics? That's correct. And, you know, and, and implant motors have torque settings, but you'll see when you get to the appropriate torque, it's going to click like that. Wow. So that you know that one, it's all the way secured down. It's not over torqued. It's not under torqued. You know, you're good to go that way. So then you're going to put the, the screw in and, and, and this is done. This is the part that you don't need a guide for essentially because everything's already in. The guides are used to place that once that's placed. You're going to place this in. You're going to want to make sure you don't place it backwards. If you place it backwards, you're going to have to turn from bottom to top instead of top to bottom. So you'll place it in. And once it's in, then you'll place the retaining screws. So those lock in and then, you know, you'll screw those all the way down. These torque to, to 40 Newton centimeters because it's metal on metal. So it's going to be a little tighter. So once you get them you know, close, you can crank it up to, to 40 Newton centimeters, one setting higher. And then you can do the same thing. You're gonna lock that in. Do you this? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I used to always love that click on a torque wrench. Yeah, it's satisfying. <laughs> you know, when I was a mechanic, one thing I noticed was that not many other mechanics were actually using their torque wrench. They were just sort of slamming stuff on. Yeah. Do you think it's kind of like that in dentistry too, where you just get some some people putting in marpies without really being that careful about proper torque and and all that? What, what's your experience been with that? You know, my guess is, you know, the more care you take in making sure that the forces are not excessive, the less likely you are to have some sort of complication failure, specifically as it relates to the equipment that you're using. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, before I step away from these type of dons, I want to try to get a visual of that, that space that exists between the appliance and the pallet. Yeah, there it is. So that large gap is intentional, and that's part of the um, orient orienting the appliance yeah so you know you would have to ask fme exactly how they determine how much that gap should be from my standpoint you know if we're if we're starting from ideal and working backwards the 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 framework would be as close to the bone as possible because again the closer that metal framework is the less uh stress and, and the less um torque right the less torque uh lever type torque that you have uh going from the appliance to the bone so in my opinion, it's not, it's not better from a mechanical standpoint for it to be off the pallet. So my guess is that it's as close to the pallet as it can be to make the system still function. Hmm. Yeah, Dr. Nuwaz specifically brought that up as a, an area that could potentially be improved in future iterations of the FME was that gap. For certain. And, and if the anchor bodies were customized, let's say, so instead of having a, you know, a prefabricated anchor body, if those anchor bodies were customized, we could put tads laterally, you know, extend them further back front, you know, very similar to how custom Marpies are designed, but yet still maintain the advantages of the guided surgery, then, you know, in my opinion, that would be more predictable. Um, but is that necessary? I don't know. Okay, if these work the way that they are, great. And if we can get predictable expansion on everyone with them, great. You know, it's much more simple this way. Uh, but if not, you know, then we continue to innovate. 